My name is Kale Harbor. I am the product manager with Advanced Control Solutions, and we are part of the Applied Automation Group. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for this event. We've got a topic that is relevant to manufacturing in the modern world as we have it today, talking about industrial code reading. So I'm going to turn my screen on. So I'm talking to you from our automation lab. Now, ACS, we are part of the Applied Automation Group. We work closely with the Applied Automation Service Centers and the teams there. And we would like to thank both them and for you for joining us today to be able to learn a little bit more about automation technology and how it affects the manufacturing world. We have with us today one of our automation specialists, Mr. Evans Farrell. Evans has many years of experience working with industrial code readers and industrial code reading technology. So the way this event is set up today, this is being recorded. I will let you know there was a mistake that I personally made when I set this up that the 11 o'clock and the one o'clock I set up as a series that you had to attend both. At one o'clock, we'll actually be covering the same material. So if you sit in on the event now, it would just be the same presentation this afternoon. More than welcome to attend at one as well. But I wanted to let you know that uh, I had made that mistake when I set it up instead of an either or I accidentally set up the series. So, uh, but if you get enough out of it, tell your coworkers, tell your friends about it, and we would love to have them register and still be able to join for one o'clock. So the webinar today, uh, the, we're gonna have a live demonstration that Evans is gonna put on for us. We're also gonna have a series of poll questions that we're gonna poll the audience with to get some information feedback. If you have questions during the event, please post it in the chat room. I'll be monitoring the chat room as we go along, and we'll get to any questions that come up uh, at the end of the presentation. So with that, I think that's all the housekeeping work I had, Evans. Are you ready to go? Uh, yes, sir. Let me uh, get switched over here. I'm going to start sharing my screen so we can get to the presentation. One moment. All right, Kayla, are you able to see the presentation pulled up? Coming through very clear, Evans. All right, fantastic. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us. As Kale mentioned, my name is Evans Farrell. Uh, I have many years of experience working in the industrial barcode reading space, uh, implementing all sorts of different technologies to, to provide solutions in that uh, space. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, the barcode reading basics, really. We're gonna give you an overview of uh, what barcode reading is, uh, we're going to talk about some advancements in technology over the years that have allowed the, the barcode reading space to expand to what it is today. Uh, we'll also talk about some situations where we've been able to help our customers solve some of their solutions uh, using the technology that we will be showing today. And then finally, uh, as Kale mentioned, I'll follow up the presentation Power, PowerPoint with a live demonstration of two technologies that I have here with me. So first, whenever I, before I started in the barcode reading space, right? So before I joined ACS, whenever I thought of barcode reading, my mind immediately goes to that POS, that point of sale where I'm at a, you know, a gas station or at a grocery store and the cashier is swiping my items across a laser scanner uh, in order to have it register in the system. And I think that's what uh, a large portion of the, the populace usually thinks of when they think of barcode reading. Um, and for, for that technology, uh, it, it's, it's starting to get phased out a little bit, the laser scanners and the raster scanners, as you can see on the slide here. But uh, I wanted to give you a brief description of how those technologies worked uh, and then where we've grown from there. Uh, so on the left here, you can see a uh, just a very basic handheld laser scanner. These laser scanners uh, have to project one line horizontally across the code, which allows it to decode the information that's inside. And then on the right, you have uh, what's called a raster scanner. Um, this technology was kind of an advancement once you got past the lasers, but what it does is it uh, shoots a laser at an oscillating motor uh, with a mirror on it, and so it's going back and forth, and basically that allows the laser to move up and down. Um, and you've, you've probably seen some of these, you know, over the years as well at those POS stations as the technology advanced. 
Uh, now, the, the issue with laser scanners and raster scanners inherently is that they don't have the ability to read 2D barcodes. That's something we will talk about here in just a minute, uh, the differences between 1D and 2D, uh, but that's one of the downfalls of that technology. And also, when it comes to raster scanners specifically, they're kind of, they kind of have reliability issues. Uh, the, the oscillating motor is a mechanical piece um, so you're going to have wear and tear over time, which eventually leads you to either having to uh, spend copious amounts of money to repair the, the item or to completely replace the, the scanner itself. And, you know, that's, we, we like to consider the newest technology to be a robust solution that's going to last you years and years to come. Uh, now, on, in terms of laser scanners, uh, I know Kale has a poll question for this. So there's going to be a poll that pops up here where uh, we want to know if there are still laser scanners being used uh, in your facilities today. So feel free to, to answer that poll as I go through the rest of the presentation. So here is where I'm going to talk about the, the advancements that have been made in the technology. So obviously the laser is using one line that's going across horizontally on the barcode. But as we've gotten more technologically advanced as a society, we've created these image-based barcode readers where it's just what you think. It snaps a picture of a certain field of view dependent upon, just like your camera, right? You have different resolutions for cameras. You have different resolutions for barcode readers. Um, and it takes a picture of your field of view. And then in the background, it uses some decoding algorithms, which is some software to find a barcode anywhere in that field of view. Uh, and it allows it to decode it without having to worry about A, either moving a laser up and down um, or you know having the barcode not in the field of view, right? So if it's in the field of view, you should be able to, to decode it with the decoding algorithms, especially with the, the products that we are most familiar with, Cognex. And here are a list of some of the uh, advancements and differences between, you know, your typical older laser scanners and your image-based scanners. You have a, a faster read rate because these imagers are able to take pictures extremely fast. It allows for something called omnidirectional reading, which means that the code can be in any orientation. And then kind of the, the biggest one I see uh, is that third option right there, the 2D code reading. Um, and again, the next slide is actually going to be talking about the differences between 1D and 2D, but that is a huge aspect in the manufacturing space nowadays. Um, and so that's one of the bigger reasons that we choose to use image-based over laser scanners. And I, I do want to point out um, that uh, you can, you will be able to see here in a minute, I have two pieces of hardware, but there is, there are handheld readers as well as fixed mount readers. Um, the image on the left here is another one of those basic handheld laser scanners. They do make handheld image-based readers. And then on the right here, you have a fixed mount reader, which means that this is going to be mounted to a surface just off of a conveyor or, you know, whatever, wherever you're trying to read a barcode. And things will pass by it as it starts to take images and decode those barcodes for you. Hey, Evans. Yeah. Want to let you know that from our first poll of our audience, um, about 20% of the people are still using laser-based scanners. Okay. 80% uh, said they're not using laser-based scanners. So that could either be they're not currently using barcode readers or they're not using laser-based. So sure. I thought I would share that result. Uh, I've got the next poll up right now. Just a quick question based off what Evans had to ask you or the technologies he talked about, whether you're using handheld or fixed mount. I mean, both are common in manufacturing this day. I don't know right. about you, Evans, but I walk into any manufacturing plant and there's both handheld and fixed mount readers in every manufacturing facility I know of this day and age. All over the place. Uh, we see handhelds, you're you know, doing the most basic of tasks, reading work orders, right? um uh to do changeovers on product and then you have you know your your more technologically advanced uh you know inline readers that could be reading 
barcodes going by at you know, 300, 400, 500 a minute. Uh, mm-hmm. And those are like canning lines, for example. But yes, they're very prevalent in the manufacturing industry. Yeah. So this is definitely a technology that's becoming, you know, part of, you know, the repair parts and the replacement part regime of what goes on in manufacturing, because in the world we live in today, we just can't live without that track and trace capabilities with it. So our audience is very split right now. We've got 50% using handheld and 50% using fixed mount. Hmm. And and I I do wonder with that is, and I'm sure that a lot of you are using both. um, So it's possible that you kind of just picked one, but I do find that very interesting that you have a 50, 50 mix uh, because yeah, it is really, it is dependent upon your facility and, and what type of actions you're doing. Right. So if you're just using barcode reading to scan barcodes uh, by hand on a pallet, you're going to obviously use the handheld versus the other example I gave a moment ago where you have barcodes on your product coming by at three to four hundred a minute. So it's really just dependent upon your specific uh, facility and application. All right. So another huge advancement. Um, in barcode reading and barcodes in general was the the jump from 1D to 2D barcodes. So real quick, I'll give you a quick background on barcode reading. It originally started as a way to track railroad cars. They would have them printed on the side of these railway cars, and that was how they knew what was you know being shipped uh, and where to. And then it advanced to the consumer market on Wrigley's gum. So those old packets of Wrigley's gum where you turn it on the side and you have that barcode, they were actually the original ones to to implement it in consumer manufacturing and traceability. So that's kind of where the 1D barcode originated from. And then over the years, uh, as you know, as we as humans do, we like to know as much as possible. Knowledge is power. And so the, the ability to stuff as much knowledge or as much information into a barcode as possible sort of became a little bit limited with the traditional 1D barcode. Uh, here in the top left, you have a traditional UPC. This is still very, very common when it comes to consumer goods. You're gonna find it on many of your, your consumer items. So it is still useful in that scope for point of sale barcode reading. Um, but in the manufacturing realm, as we are having to track this batch of product or, you know, this palette of items, that track and trace, traceability, uh, has become extremely important over the past few years. Uh, and so the implementation of something called a 2D barcode, which is, you know, either the data matrix code here or the QR code, which I'm sure more of you are a little bit familiar with the QR rather than the data matrix. Um, these 2D codes are able to pack a ton of information as compared to your 1D codes. Uh, in the list here of, of examples, the differences between them, uh, you have an increased character length. So 300 or 3116 numeric and 2335 alphanumeric in the 2D codes as opposed to the amount of information in the 1D code. Another huge aspect that kind of gets overlooked by a lot of people when talking about 1D versus 2D is 2D codes have built in error correction. This means that if uh, your printer starts to run out of ink, so it's printed poorly, if your barcode gets damaged in some way or scuffed or there's a mark through it, um, the error correction in the barcode has the information imprinted three times. So you have three times the ability to read it when using an image-based barcode reader. And so it just makes it a lot more robust and you don't have to worry so much about if something goes wrong with your barcode. So this slide is to give you kind of a description of the barcode reading solution that we offer. We work with uh, Cognex. We consider them to be an industry leader in the image-based barcode reading world. Uh, They also are extremely, extremely high in the machine vision world. That's kind of where they they, they built their business around and then implemented that machine vision into barcode reading as well. So it kind of 
coincides with the conversation we're having today about image-based barcode reading. Uh, something important that they have is their modularity with their equipment. Um, I don't know if you can still see me or not, but in a moment, you'll see a fixed mount that I have mounted here. And the lighting, the lensing, the, the, uh, the orientation of the reader are all modular. So swapping out hardware, which is usually a, a maintenance nightmare and very uh, cost prohibitive, swapping out hardware can take you know five minutes maximum if a lens or light goes out. So that's extremely important. Uh, they also have a very easy to use uh, and very easy to start up programming uh, software which is free, both their vision software and their Dataman barcode reading software are free on their website. You can get them today. And then finally, uh, this goes back to something I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, but best in class decoding algor algorithms. That means that on the back end, when you're doing looking at all the code and stuff that's looking at the image, they have the best ability to look into that image and find a barcode. And that's very prevalent here in these images, right? So in the top left, you have a barcode that's, who knows, all sorts of angled away from the camera. We're still reading it. You've got some codes that have, you know, mark throughs here, still able to read it, and even some missing portions of code. So those algorithms are very important as well. So, Industry successes. I wanted to bring up this slide um, as a way of kind of pointing out some of the manufacturing fields that we found the most uh, success with in terms of providing a solution that has helped our customer. Uh, for example, food and beverage. I have, was at a customer recently who makes uh, cylindrical containers filled with food. And with a traditional laser scanner, for example, the older style, you have to orient that container so that it, the laser is always hitting the barcode as it goes by. With image-based barcode reading, you're able to set up uh, a few readers in an orientation and see a full 360 of this container. And why is that important? Well, it's important because you can spend a whole lot of money trying to orient products as they come down a manufacturing line. Uh, it also allows for liability of uh, if for some reason the, the, the art on the container gets skewed, you still will be able to read it uh, from any angle. And then they were also using that barcode to confirm that they had the right lid on the right product. We were also implementing a machine vision system. So we communicated those two together, which allowed for a quality uh, check. Whereas if they don't have this quality check, you run the risk of getting a recall. And in the food and beverage industry, it, I'm sure some of you know, but obviously recalls are very bad and very costly. So implementing this barcode reading system uh, was able to save them a lot of money from having to worry about that situation. Uh, we, do, we do some work with warehouse and logistics with some of our customers as far as their warehouses next to their manufacturing facilities. A lot of handheld readers being able to read up on top of uh, uh, stacks and stacks of product. Then another huge one that we do is automotive. Uh, with the implementation of a 2D barcode, uh, the automotive industry needed a way to make their barcode a little more permanent as they're shipping these products from, let's say a, a tier one supplier all the way to where they're going to be assembled into the full vehicle, putting a sticker with a barcode on you know, a camshaft is going to only last so long when you're trying to ship it. So they implemented new ways of printing barcodes uh, and those are dot peening or laser etching, which basically just means that they are permanently putting that code on to the surface of their product. Uh, and so having an image-based barcode reader is very important when trying to decode those types of codes. Um, and then pharmaceuticals, this is another one of those quality things. In the pharmaceutical world, your barcodes have to also live up to a certain standard. Um, that's a whole different genre of barcode reading that we also get into, which is called verification. But it basically means that your barcode has to be printed onto the, the, you know, the 
label or onto the surface of the material in a certain grade. And so with Cognex, we also have the ability to grade barcodes that are, we are reading as well. And it will give you, a, you know, an F, a D, a C, B, or A grade. And um, so in the pharmaceutical world, you have to have that barcode verification as well. Just another industry where we've implemented some barcode reading solutions using image-based barcode readers. All right, so uh, this is gonna be the last slide of the uh, PowerPoint portion of this presentation, but I wanted to give you these questions as a way to kind of self-reflect Whenever you leave this presentation and then you go back into your facilities or, you know, go back to wherever it is that you're, you, whatever you do on a daily basis, you're going to be thinking to yourself, all right, that was a lot of information. Where could I implement this? Right? So if you're one of those people that still uses laser scanners, you can say, all right, we have all of these laser scanners. I learned about these image-based scanners. How might it be able to help us? Are we going to get, um, increased traceability and analytics using a 2D code versus a 1D code because we can put so much more information. Uh, uh, has, have we ever had a shipment that's been refused because of damaged uh, product identification, AKA your barcode was scuffed and a, a reader wasn't able to read it down the line. Having that quality check will also help you with those things. And then obviously, do any of your customers, if you have customers that you're selling product to, do they have a barcode quality mandate that you have to follow? So all of these things are kind of questions I want you to, to absorb. And, and as you go throughout your day and you're walking around your facility, think to yourself, where can I use these things? Where can I use this new technology that I learned about today? So take those, absorb them, and kind of self-reflect on how we may, may be able to help you uh, with a solution that can can solve an issue that you have in your facility. So now I'm going to swap over to the hands-on portion real quick. And are you, Kale, are you able to see the data man setup tool now? Yes, so everything's coming through clear ovens. Fantastic. So as I mentioned before, they have a software called the data man setup tool. The barcode reading family that Cognex offers is called data man. It's very straightforward, very easy to program, very easy to use, uh, but we're gonna use it today just to kind of show you the results and the power of some of this equipment that we have. Um, I have a handheld reader here, and then I also have my mounted fix mount reader. Uh, both of these are have their own applications that they soar and they excel at, uh, but we wanted to show you some of these uh, in action. Let me reconnect here. Looks like my plug came out. So while it does that, I'll, I'll use the, uh, the handheld here. I just went around my, my home, found a couple of items that should have barcode reader barcodes on them, an Altoids can, um, and we're just going to, to read these with the technology. Oops. See? I'm not sure if you guys can hear it through the mic, but it also beeps, this specific handheld beeps. So we can read 1D barcodes. We can read 2D barcodes. This is a QR code. This one's even trickier because this actually has plastic film over it as well. This hasn't even been opened. So we're able to read barcodes through plastic film. And now let's see if my fixed mount reader was able to reconnect here while you're checking on the fixed mount reader we did have a question that came in ovens sure so uh jason miller posted is there a reader or scanner that has a screen attached to it that an employee can pull up information on the fly or can the employee physically type in the part number or physical description if they don't know exactly where the component is located in the parts room so there's a couple aspects mm. to this. Let's take care of the first one. So with, we don't have a reader uh, that, that we do that has a screen built in. Usually fixed mount readers, they're embedded into machines, they're right. embedded into things, but they have full access to interface with a PC to let you see what's going on. 
If you're speaking of a handheld reader, we do have a handheld reader option that allows you to drop either an Android-based or an Apple-based um, device into it, almost like an old iPod just to be a, a screen or a newer actual cell phone that will give you that instant screen feedback. There are options for that we could uh, talk about with you on it. As far as the second half of the question, for the employee could um, enter in what they're looking for and then be able to find out where that component is located in the parts room. Um, that almost, the way the question is worded, it sounds more like an operator screen. You walk up, you put in what you're looking for, it tells you where it is. Really not part of the, the barcode technology unless you had a code you were going to zap and say, I want one of these, where is it located? The reader portion of it's one thing, but the database interaction, that's something we can do, but that is a different technology than this. Yeah, and, and like Kale said, it, that portion of it is more of the, the system solution, right? So obviously we can incorporate barcode reading into that type of solution, like you mentioned, um, but the portion that you're talking about is more of the, the, the full breadth solution of integrating a barcode reading solution into your environment, right? And that's, that's why we like to have conversations with our customers and say, hey, um, you know, what, what's causing you issues? You know, we, we've obviously shown them te the technology so they know that it exists. And then we have a, a conversation or many conversations sometimes where we say, all right, how can we implement this into what you already have? Or how can we integrate a solution to work for you? Um, so that is kind of the whole solution as opposed to just the barcode reading portion of the technology. So I believe I've got my fix mount back up here. There we go. Are we able to see that, Kale? Yes, it's coming through very clear. Perfect. So again, this is just another version. This was the handheld version. This is the fixed mount. This is the one that ends up mounted to the side of a conveyor or something where you have product going by. We're reading the, the same QR code that we were with the fixed mount. Let's go with the Altoid scan. Boom, reads it just fine. That's a 1D code we were reading there. 1D code again, QR code, where I covered up a little bit of the corner actually, so you can see some of the technology in, in action. And this one's a little bit more finicky because I got a, there we go. I just had it at the wrong height. So now we're reading the QR code that's on there and we could also read the 1D as well. Um, so this is the, the, software that it's going to run on this is where you're going to see all of your images um, if you're doing a quality inspection and you, you want to save all of no read images so let's say i trigger the camera right or the tr camera gets triggered and there's nothing there we want to know if there's some not something there or if there's something wrong with the product you can do that um, and there's so much stuff that you can do in the software that we won't get into today because it's it's very detailed um, but we just wanted to show you how these fixed mounts, as well as the handheld image-based barcode readers, are able to you know, do the barcode reading and implement 1D as well as 2D barcode reading. Right. So, Kale, do you, have there any, been any other questions pop up? No other questions have popped up yet. I'm, I've got the chat room open. So if anyone has something they would like to ask before we close out, please post it and we'll address it. Um, you know, the barcode reading technologies is something that exists now in manufacturing all over the place. I can't imagine a manufacturing site that doesn't have code reading to it. It's part of our day-to-day -day lives, but it's also a technology that needs to be deployed correctly to get the best benefit out of it. So in working with the applied service centers and with the applied group, uh, that's something we can help support through that channel to help take care of these needs in the marketplace. And Evans, if I remember correctly, you still are available to go on site and do some one-on-one -on -one trainings with people, aren't you? 100%, yes. Uh, if, if anybody is needing some help, you know, it, whether it be finding where, where in your processes we can implement these image-based readers, or if you already have some of these Cognex readers and you need some training on how they need to be programmed or how they need to be optimized. Again, I've been doing this for, for three years now, so I've got plenty of experience 
and I love to go visit people. So <laughs> <laughs> very good. So uh, we also offer training classes and contact your local AIT service center folks. They can get in touch with us and get our class schedule. Would love to have you come to one of our classes, either at our facility. I'm in our automation lab now, or we can come on site to be able to help troubleshoot. So the, no other questions have come in, Evans. I want to thank you for your time and effort that you put into putting this together. For everyone on the meeting, uh, when we do the one o'clock session this afternoon, we're going to be covering the same material. You're welcome to sit in or invite your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers. Uh, this is also being recorded. So when we get done, this is going to get posted on our YouTube channel and the link is going to get shared throughout Applied to be able to have access to it. So if you're working with someone who wasn't able to attend and you'd like them to go through the information or get to learn a little bit more about it, that will be another way you can review the material. Evans, thanks for taking the time and the work today. Of course. That's and, my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you to everyone for attending and I hope you all have a wonderful day and look forward to seeing the next group at one o'clock. Thank you guys.